Welcome um, to tonight's Denver Java and Boulder Java users group. I'm Greg Ostrovich, and we've been doing combined meetings uh, since COVID and continuing just to meet online. We hope to meet again in person uh, once everything's figured out. Reminder, we're always looking for DJUG and BJUG speakers, so let us know. Email uh, Matt Rabel or myself or hit us up through the meetup group. Um, and let Chris Wyna know as well um, if you're interested in speaking. Um, we want to do some housekeeping announcements, and then we'll introduce the speakers. Uh, the speaker um, for starters, if you need the restroom, hopefully you can find it wherever you're watching this from. Uh, Tech Systems is usually our food sponsor, and we appreciate their support. Tonight's dinner is sponsored by whatever's in your pantry and whatever's in your fridge. And uh, shout out to Courtney Elterman, uh, C. Elterman at techsystems.com. Uh, you can reach out to her um, if you need to, uh, if you have some hiring needs, uh, they're a sponsor and we appreciate their support. Uh, JFrog is another sponsor. Um, they've been doing some awesome giveaways. Uh, you can scan the QR code or use the bit.ly link. It should be in the chat box uh, to enter their drawing. Apex Systems is another sponsor. Uh, they've been sponsoring the beer. Uh, they're a staffing agency. Um, Braden Collip is one of their uh, one of their, our, our main contact, main point of contact. Uh, but tonight's uh, beers or other beverages are sponsored by whatever's in your beer fridge or your fridge. Uh, tonight I'm trying uh, not your father's root beer, and it's it's pretty good. Another sponsor is Develop Intelligence. Uh, they give away uh, access to Plural Site. Um, Ace. Uh, Van One Seal is one of our main points of contact. I work for the state of Colorado and we've started to use Pluralsight. We're doing a kind of a test with it and it's really rich and it's really kind of cool. I had no idea how amazing it was. I haven't been using it and it's, I would recommend it. So we thank uh, Develop Intelligence for sponsoring us and for doing that uh, drawing. And they're always looking to hire uh, technical instructors who specialize in several technologies uh, for contract opportunities. Those include Java, Golang, JavaScript, React, DevOps stuff like Kubernetes and Docker, and many others. Uh, you can reach out to uh, Bob Clary or to Jarrett um, at developintelligence.com. Amazon is another sponsor, and they're hiring all sorts of stuff, full stack. So reach out to them, and we thank uh, Chris Almond and Sam Ayer at Amazon uh, for their sponsorship of our Java Users Group. Another sponsor is Okta. Uh, they sponsor the Meetup site and this online meeting that Matt does for us, and we really appreciate that. So reach out to them if, uh, for, if you have any needs, especially I know they have an awesome OAuth uh, ability that you can code through their stuff. In fact, uh, my mother-in-law used to work for a company that was using that, and it was really cool. I was like, oh, I know who I know who works on that. Uh, NextGen is another sponsor. They're a staffing agency as well. Uh, Beth Crowley is our main contact point for that. And uh, the last I heard, they were looking for a full stack uh, mid to senior Java developer with Angular experience, and so reach out to them. Uh, their website is listed. Oh, uh, we have a new contact, I guess, um, uh, Dana Eslin. So that's really great. We appreciate their support. Another contact, uh, another supporter of the Java Users Group and of the Boulder Java Users Group is uh, Venkat Subramanian. Um, he has agilelearner.com. It's a website. Um, and then in addition to training through that, uh, he will be putting on a conference. It was uh, postponed because of COVID concerns, and I'm sure they'll ramp that up. And they were having an amazing number of speakers at that conference. It was looking really good. Another sponsor is JetBrains. Uh, we give away an IntelliJ uh, IDE, but you could use, uh, it's it's really rich. You could use uh, Java, Python, Ruby. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. So a lot of things are available through that. And we thank uh, JetBrains for their giveaway every Every month for years, they've been doing it with us, and it's been awesome. Um, for door prizes, uh, Mike Zueto will handle that for us. I know he does some stuff behind the scenes to make that happen. We also have, uh, I want a, a big shout out to the board uh, for the DJUG that helps uh, helps us put this on. Uh, I just talk in front of you guys, and uh, the, all of the hard work is done by Matt Rabel, who gets the speakers, the locations, when we meet in person, um, and does the broadcast. 
uh, Mike Zueto, who does the door prizes and works with the sponsors, and Zeddy Chinfong, who does all of the operational stuff, including social media, announcements, and other, other stuff. So with that, I'm going to bring up uh, Chris Weina from the Boulder Java Users Group uh, so that they can thank their sponsors as well. Good evening, everyone. Uh, of course, uh, we're also thanking Tech Systems. Um, they're probably America's foremost technical recruiter, and we work with Anastasia Alexenko, a really smart, personable person. If you want to check in and find out what's going on in, in the space, uh, she's a great person to chat with. Uh, we're also very thankful. Normally, um, before and after COVID, we meet at Rule 4 Cyber uh, security and emerging technologies. They were last year's um, Colorado Technology Association Award winner, and this year's, uh, I think they won this year's uh, CEO award. No fluff, just stuff. Jay, Jay Zimmerman, they provide world class training. Uh, Vencat Subramanium, of course, uh, IntelliJ, JetBrains, and O'Reilly Books. Thanks, Greg. Back to you. Thanks, Chris. All right. Um, so before we introduce um, our featured speaker, I'm going to introduce uh, Girchan Wilenga, who's going to tell us all about the Fuji uh, framework. I'm really excited to hear about this. So, uh, Girchan. Thanks a lot. So I'm going to just share my screen. So, hi everybody. My name is Geertjan. I'm in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and it's 1.30 in the morning down here. Um, and, um, you know, I'd really like to thank you all for, for attending this uh, session, um, especially because the reason why, um, why we're here is because um, we're doing a jug tour and we are Fuji. And that's what I want to briefly uh, talk about. So Fuji is a new community platform or community site, which um, if you were around back in the day is very similar to java.net um, as we used to have it. So um, what we have on the uh, Fuji site is um, all the information that you need to do your daily Java development work, whether you're a beginner in Java or whether you are some advanced Java developer needing tips and tricks and insights and so on. So for example, um, with all the different quarterly updates um, coming out all the time, do you know what fixes are actually in those updates? So on Fuji, you can see um, per quarter and then per release, what fixes have gone into those different um, updates. And also you can vote on them. So what we want to um, um, end up with is a dashboard view with all the favorite fixes of the community. So you go in here, either in the all issues view or in the component view, you'll browse through the, these different issues here um, that have been fixed for that particular release in that particular update. Um, so first of all, just to inform yourself of what's actually happened there. Um, it's really hard to tell what's been going on with Java over the different updates because there are so many of them, you can keep track. So that's what Fuji is for. And as you read through these and, and you go from here into the actual issue itself and read more about it and sort this on, based on priority and so on, you might find some that you find interesting and then you will vote on them. And based on your votes, um, those items end up on the highlights page. And the ones that end up on the highlights page are the ones that we within um, the Fuji community provide commentaries on. So you see um, on the highlights page, um, for example, back in April last year, um, that there are Fuji commentaries here. So for example, if, a fish, uh, if an issue is named something like integrate Marlin renderer per J265, you would have no idea automatically what that means. And so we add a commentary. Did you know that JDK9 switched to using the higher performing Marlin renderer? And this is a backport of that feature to JDK8. So we want to add analysis on top of all of these different fixes that have gone into these different updates. So not only do you see what's gone into the updates, but also you get some analysis that Fuji provides. So that's one aspect of what Fuji is for. Another aspect is um, command line arguments. Do you know what all the different command line arguments are for Java? Do you know what's new across different releases? Now, Chris Newland, a Java champion, has a wonderful site called uh, chriswhocoach.com. 
and his content has been integrated by him into Fuji. Um, so Fuji is really a, an integrated community platform that brings in different resources from different places. Another example is um, Mark Hoffman, also a Java champion, who has a very nice site called javaalmanet.io on which you can see um, the different open JDK distributions because not only is it not so easy to keep track of all the different updates, not so easy to keep track of all the different open JDK uh, distributions either. Um, what does Java mean right now? You know, it's not just Oracle Java, of course. There's all, all kinds of different um, open JDK distributions and also Javas that are not based on the open JDK. And so that is the information that is collected together here on the Java version Almanac integrated into Fuji. So those are the three key um, services that Fuji provides right now. Um, the, an, a view onto the updates, a, um, a view onto the command line arguments, and also onto the different open JDK distributions. Then in addition, there is a blog. So either um, you can reuse your um, existing blog content here um, as uh, Matt has done and Steve will be speaking, or you can write um, completely new content um, directly here. Um, what you'll find is a lot of pretty well-known people from the Java community and also less well-known people. Um, we want to really provide this as a platform for um, new people to the Java community as well as those who have been around for a while, so to get a nice mixture. Um, and you might ask yourself, who is behind all of this? Where does this come from? It's really a community-driven uh, uh, information site with a board consisting of Azul, Datadog, Datastax, JFrog, Payara, and Sneak. And those are the um, organizations behind it um, on the board. Um, but in fact, anyone can get involved. There is, of course, a Slack channel. So on the Slack channel is where we decide uh, what gets posted on the Fuji blog, so on Fuji today. Every day there is a new article. So you can see this is from today and then March 9th, yesterday, and so on, all the way back. There's different um, categories um, of content, and you could become a community manager for a particular category. So, for example, in the tools area, um, there's a whole section on IntelliJ driven by Helen Scott from JetBrains. And um, there's a DevOps section um, driven by people from JFrog because they're experts in the DevOps area um, in the Java community. So there's this matching of organizations and um, individuals to their expertise um, running particular parts of, um, of Fuji. So in the security area, for example, um, clearly a leader in the Java area in security is Sneak. And Brian Vermeer from Sneak um, is the community manager for the security parts of Fuji. Um, so every um, Monday um, morning, what happens is that we decide what will be published that week on Fuji. And we've, we've been posting one a day. Um, a week or two ago, we had so much content um, that was still fresh and relevant that we posted uh, two a day for a week. Um, there's more and more content coming in. And it's all on the WordPress. Um, so it's, it's not ideal, but it works. It's good enough. It does the job. Um, if you want to be involved and provide content, you can get um, credentials to put your content up there, or we can do that together. Um, and finally, there is a Twitter handle, and we would love for you to follow us on Twitter. And when you do that, uh, you will get at least once a day a tip or trick or insight about a new article or something new going on um, in the Java community. And this will eventually uh, result in a newsletter and, and, and other um, integrations. So one could imagine, for example, Stack Overflow, the, the Java parts of Stack Overflow also being integrated into Fuji so that we as a community can really end up with a one-stop shop for everything related to Java. That's uh, with Fuji. And what does Fuji stand for? What does it mean? Well, the letters here are a friend of OpenJDK. So the, the J is from JDK and We've added the A and the Y to make it clear how to, how to pronounce it, which gives us a bird. So 
Um, with FUJ, uh, what we have is a place for friends of OpenJDK. Anyone using Java in any way at all is welcome to participate in one way or another, either by checking it out and taking a look and following on Twitter, or by contributing content and leading parts of FUJ yourself. That's the story of FUJ. Please join in and enjoy the session. Thank you very much. That was awesome. I appreciate that. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and bring up uh, next our uh, speaker tonight. Um, it's going to be our talks on JavaFX, which is really interesting. Years ago at the Java Users Group, we've had a couple of speakers on JavaFX. And I remember at the time, it was supposed to be kind of a replacement of Adobe or a competitor of Adobe Flash, which has since, I think, gone away. So I'll be, I'm really interested to see what's current on that and what you would use it for uh, in, in the Java framework for stuff that we need to do. So uh, tonight's topic is the Modern Java Clients with JavaFX, the definitive guide. Um, this session is for professionals building Java applications for desktop, mobile, and embedded devices in the cloud uh, era. It will help you to build enhanced visual experiences and to deploy modern, easy to maintain client applications across a variety of platforms. These applications can take advantage of the latest user interface components, 3D technology, and cloud services to create an immersive visualization and allow high value data manipulation. Learn how to leverage the latest open source Java client technologies to build rich, responsive, and modern user interfaces from the authors of the definitive Java client reference. Um, tonight's speaker is Steve Chin. Uh, Stephen Chin is uh, the Senior Director of Developer Relations at JFrog, author of Raspberry Pi with Java, The Definitive Guide to Modern Client Development, and Pro Java FX Platform. He has keynoted numerous Java conferences around the world, including Oracle Code One, formerly Java One, where he is an eight-time Rockstar Award recipient. Uh, Stephen is an avid motorcyclist who has done evangelism tours in Europe, Japan, and Brazil, interviewing hackers in their natural habitat and posting the videos on uh, nighthacking.org. When he is not traveling, he enjoys teaching kids how to embed, how to do embedded and robot programming together with his teenage daughter. You can find him on Twitter at Steve on Java. And uh, without further ado, uh, let me bring up Steve Chen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Cool. Thanks very much for the intro, Greg. And it's a pleasure to be able to speak at the, the Denver Jug. Um, actually, the last time I was out in Denver, I was doing kids workshops together with um, with Matt and Melissa, who, who do the Denver um, Kids Who Code program. So that was that was awesome. Um, I think it was DevOps, DevOps for Kids program. So that was that was awesome, and um, super excited to see all the folks in chat. So I have the chat up on one of my many monitors. So thanks for saying hi, Jeremiah. Um, random guy. I'm going to answer your question in just a sec. So hang in there. So if you have questions as I'm going through the presentation, feel free to to ask them and make this as interactive as possible. Um, I don't know about you guys, but um, a year ago, when when we first heard about um, the the virus and what was going to happen, um, I, I kind of pictured that um, it, it would be this this sort of apocalyptic scenario, and this this would be this would be the sort of life which which we'd all be going through, um, uh, kind of on the road, um, maybe maybe having our our, our dog in tow. Um, and um, you know, going down the highway and you know foraging for food. Now, unfortunately, this this isn't reality in the pandemic. Um, and I think instead, what what most of us have ended up doing is um, something equivalent to to this. So um, this is this is me on a typical day. And and yes, I I, I do work in a bathrobe. I, I'd highly recommend it. Why why put pants on when you can be super comfortable? Um, I have three monitors. I have a video set up, um, and I have a, a, a super plush red chair, which you can you can also see behind me as well. So um, I, I think that we're very fortunate as developers to to be able to continue our livelihood and do the sort of great development and coding and work which we do um, uh, f straight from our home. So um, you know, I think we're very fortunate in that, and hopefully, we're all have going to have this all behind behind us and. I'll actually be able to meet you all in person in Denver sometime in the in the near future. Um, okay, so random guy has a question about the raffle. So in the top right corner, you see where it says jfrog.com slash show notes. 
Um, if you go to that URL, this Denver jug is listed on the show notes page, and that's where the raffle for um, one of our super cool prizes is. So I'm going to, if, you, if you're anxious, go there now. Otherwise, I'll have more info about the raffle later in the presentation. Okay, and then um, this is a brief history of JavaFX. Um, and I, I guess I'm kind of dating myself by going all the way back to, to 2006. But this was when the original F3 forms follow function was written and built by Chris Oliver. Um, and he he kind of packaged this this entire solution. Um, it was it lets you build user interfaces and a custom scripting language. It sat on top of Piccolo 2D, which actually was an open source project that I was helping out with at the time. And um, it ran on top of the Java runtime and lets you build really rich client experiences with a, um, a really seamless language and platform. And Chris, Chris's demos were awesome, where he'd basically take any website um, which was professionally designed, and in, in minutes, he'd be able to rebuild it in JavaFX with better animations and graphics and um, a, a better, um, more powerful programming language behind the scenes. This, when CBion got acquired by Sun back in 2008, um, this is when JavaFX 1.0 came out as the initial release um, of JavaFX technology. So um, this this was um, okay. I can't see emotes in the chat, but that's that's I'm sure that's awesome, Bruno. So um, when JavaFX first came out, um, it, it was something which basically brought this great platform, and then it lets you do this directly on top of the Java platform. Um, one of the big challenges with it was you had to learn a new language. Like the JavaX, JavaFX script was implemented as a proper scripting language, kind of like Groovy or Scala or Clojure. And as a result, you had to learn an entirely new language to code JavaFX, which they removed in 2011 um, and went straight to Java APIs, which actually brought a lot of popularity to the language in Java 2.0. Further bundling it with Java SE Update 6 was, again, a, a great move. So now it just came with the JDK by default. And um, finally, it was fully integrated with the JDK and um, JavaFX 8. Um, unfortunately, um, somebody at Oracle pushed the, the kill switch back in um, 2018 and removed it from the JDK. But, but like any good technology, this wasn't enough to keep JavaFX down. And um, I, I don't think you're getting the audio on this, but of course, Arnold's saying, I'll be back, which is exactly what happens to JavaFX with the return of JavaFX supported by Gluon. So Gluon is a, a, a company in Belgium, but what they do is they provide consulting and um, professional services for JavaFX. And they took on both OpenJDK work for JavaFX, so they have released JavaFX for Java 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, and they even have a preview release for Java 17. Yes, Jonathan, we're, <laughs> we're all pretty old. Um, and then also Scene Builder, which in my opinion is the best way to get started with JavaFX, um, is a great GUI builder for doing all this stuff on the desktop. Um, and of course, you can run JavaFX on iOS and Android now as well, which is the future of JavaFX. So running JavaFX on mobile is really the way to go forward. So um, I'm going to give you a quick demo of how to build your, your first JavaFX application. But before that, some more details on uh, what we're offering for, um, for a raffle for this presentation. So as I mentioned, if you go to the show notes site or you scan the URL, um, you will get Today's slides, of course, you don't have to take notes, um, a video of this talk, which we'll post right after the recording's done. And we're raffling off a baby Yoda Lego set. So this is um, Ari, who is our community manager and supports all the Java user groups that JFrog sponsors. Um, this is one of his personal favorite sets, I know. Um, and it's it's awesome for, even if you don't like it, your kids will love it. So um, we're raffling off one of these only for folks who came to the talk tonight. So um, go to the raffle. There, there is a checkbox to opt in for marketing communication, but if you don't check that, you're still entered in the raffle. Um, so you can also just enter the raffle and not receive any spam communication from us if you don't want to. Okay, so back to the talk. I think the first starting place for JavaFX for everybody is really Scene Builder. Um, and so what Scene Builder is, is it's a drag and drop 
rapid application development environment. Um, it was built by the awesome team in Grenoble, um, who was with Sun and Oracle, and just did awesome um, user experience work to to create one of the best um, GUI builders available. I, I I definitely know this is better than than what most people have to deal with because I had to help my daughter with um with her IOS class over the summer, and using the Apple tools to to build UIs for um for iOS was quite a pain. That was that that's something which you shouldn't wish on your worst enemy to actually have to use that for professional development. But Team Builder is actually a pleasure to use. And in the left, it gives you all the available containers and controls. Um, it gives you a full tree view of your entire document pane. You get a preview um, where you can drag and drop and build things, and then um, full property editing. And another nice thing about the architecture of Scene Builder is you can use it on real applications because it generates an FXML file, which is entirely separate from your code and you use a controller in your code to, to integrate with your code base. But what this allows you to do is it allows you to, to have a clean separation of your, your model and your view. Okay, so let me let me quickly switch to Scene Builder and give you all a, a live demo of this. Okay, and let me try sharing um, in StreamYard. All right, I think I got it. Um, okay, so this is what the Scene Builder user interface looks like. Welcome, Carl. Glad to have you. We're we're having quite the the author meeting here between. Um, past and present um, JavaFX authors. So something something also to note, and I'll talk about this a bit later, is um, APRESS actually is going to do an update for our Java modern clients with JavaFX book, which we released um, just, just a little bit over a year ago. And so we'll have an update of that for Java 17. So I think it's awesome also that um, not only the JavaFX community, but also publishers and folks are really getting behind JavaFX as the, the future of client development. Okay, so here's here's what Scene Builder looks like. You, um, as I mentioned, you can see all the controls in the top left and then drag and drop them right in. Um, so we can, we can pick maybe a, um, let's grab a button, pop it into the view. And then on the right are all the, the properties. And as we edit this, this will edit in person. You can directly edit um, styles and sizes, see exactly what it's gonna look like when it, when it gets run. Um, and then um, in general, JavaFX does a great job of um, allowing you to use CSS and then style things separately. So if um, if you want to entirely change the look of buttons or the look of different components, which you're, you're editing, you can do that entirely um, straight from CSS and um, separate not only your, your model from your code, but also your design, your styles from your model from your code. So have clean separation of everything. Here's a label. And then you can even do complicated stuff like um, like list views and and media and images and all sorts of great stuff. So it allows you to to mock up stuff really um, easily, right from the user interface. Oh, okay, now we're now we're just gonna have to roll through my hard drive and find something. Uh, let's get a a nice wiring closet picture. I have no idea what this is. Oh, I know that that's um, from our recent um, solar installation. They, they messed up the wiring, so I had to send pictures to the inspector. Okay, and then you can run it straight from the preview, show in preview window, which of course you're not gonna see. So I'm hoping the folks are on the ball with the sharing, because we're gonna need to switch quite a bit here. Let me see, oh, wonderful, it's untitled window number two. 
not that one. Huh. Okay. I, I, I can't get, it doesn't show the sub window properly. Okay. So you're going to have to trust me that there's a preview window which popped up. And in the preview window, all these controls are directly clickable because it's a JavaFX application and the JavaFX application is spawning another JavaFX application, which is actually your real view running. Um, so let me let me open up another sample. This, of course, is not going to show up immediately. Just a sec. This one is probably called sample. Okay, so this is a, a more complicated example. Um, which of course the last presentation I used this for was Hyderabad. So one of the great things about um, doing virtual presentations is you can you can travel the world and be everywhere. And this shows a more complicated example where it has um, drop shadow on different things. Um, it has a, a nice image in the background, which is from a, a NASA picture and shows you some more of the capabilities of what you can actually do with JavaFX components pretty easily from within the editor. Um, so I think you, you get the basic idea from Scene Builder. It allows you to do lots of um, different advanced capabilities in JavaFX to quickly mock up user interfaces and then to take that directly into the code, which um, you're then going to create controllers for and um, build out your um, complicated business logic, which you need. Okay, not that screen. Let's do that one. Okay, so now I'm going to get into some different use cases for how you would use JavaFX um, in industry. And so some examples of this are, um, one of them is this training and resource management application done by Mint. And I think this actually is quite typical of JavaFX user interfaces where um, if you're building a user interface for internal uses and you need super complicated um, applications which have trees and tree tables and um, grids and Gantt charts, um, using a rich client framework like JavaFX is, is just natural. It gives you a lot more capabilities, um, lets you do things much more complicated and also iterate much more quickly than you can with web applications, which... Um, as you can imagine, building this as a web UI, you'd basically kill yourself with all the, the page load times and um, pagination and scrolling and refreshes, even with modern JavaScript frameworks. A second application where JavaFX just wins overall is anything where you're doing um, scientific applications or you need to do 3D modeling. Um, I'll give some examples of 3D models in a sec for practical examples of how you actually build things in JavaFX, but this is... Um, the NASA Deep Space Trajectory Explorer, which um, Diane, who works for NASA, was nice enough to give us some official screenshots for. And basically, they have scientific libraries written in Java. And by having a JavaFX user interface, this allows them to directly take advantage of what they're doing um, inside the Java code with a JavaFX 3D accelerated representation of um, celestial bodies and trajectories, which is what they're doing for research. And I think something which all of us have use for is mobile applications. And um, with all the great work which Gluon's been doing with mobile applications, um, you can actually build entirely cross-platform mobile applications that work on Apple, that work on Android, and that also run on desktop. Um, and access mobile specific APIs like acceleration and camera and all these different apps. And one example of this is the DevOx conference mobile application, which um, is entirely written in JavaFX. And um, you, you would never know this from running it because it looks like any other application in the store. But um, if you looked under the covers, it's actually Java code, which is ahead of time compiled for Android and iOS applications and has really, really good performance um, compared to even native applications and a much better user experience than you'd ever get from um, wrapping JavaScript and browser in, um, in a mobile application. Um, and a great practical example of this is a game which Garrett wrote called Space Effects, which is now also published to 
um, the respective mobile app stores. And I'm going to show you running in the browser as an example of the, um, the power of JavaFX technology. Um, and the, the way I'm going to sh show this running in the browser is using a technology called JPro, which we'll talk a little bit more about when we get into how you do graphics acceleration. Um, but basically what JPro does is it lets you run JavaFX in the browser and it, it does all of the, um, all the rendering for the JavaFX application on the backend server. It sends um, data to the front end JavaScript UI, which then does all the 2D and scene graph rendering of what's coming from the back end. And it gives you this nice seamless um, experience where you can see, go ahead and share the um, screen I just shared, where you can, where you can see exactly um, uh, what the back end JavaFX application is doing. And as an end user, it's as simple as clicking on a link which runs the application. So this is the SpaceFX application running inside the browser. Um, and this is the same experience you get on mobile, you get on desktop, and you guys will all be able to experience just, just how bad I am at, um, at actual video games. Uh, if I could start it. Oh, there we go. So you can see that for for an application running on the um, in the browser, this is really performant. Um, and you can imagine if you actually um, were running aside directly inside of a mobile application which has 3D acceleration, or you had um, you weren't trying to talk and kill things at the same time, this would be a great experience. And um, you know, either an awesome video game or an awesome, even better business application, considering all the graphics capabilities which JavaFX gives you. Okay, so now that you've you've seen a little bit about the um, the capabilities of JavaFX, let me get into some specifics about how you can do 3D graphics inside of JavaFX. Um, and what I'll do is I'll explain the, the 3D graphics concepts, and then we'll back into and we'll show some some code for how we can actually do this. Um, so in, th in JavaFX, um, you start with some basic primitives. So you have boxes, cylinders, and spheres. These are the, the base primitives you can use to um, construct objects. If you want to do more complicated objects um, where you want to do arbitrary shapes and geometries, you can import models from a 3D program as a, um, a triangle mesh and a, a mesh view. So this allows you to import more complicated models um, but out of the box, you can use boxes, cylinders, and spheres to construct really quick um, 3D objects. And on top of this, you texture map on top of those either primitives or imported graphics using um, texture maps where you supply a, a UV map, which does the mapping from the texture to the 3D model. Um, it takes the surface, then it applies it to the, the physical model, which you have in the scene graph. And you can define both the geometry and how it gets gets plotted and mapped. For in this example, we're taking a, a flat Mercator mapped um, um, picture of the of the world, and then mapping it to a um, a sphere. And um, on top of that, kind of the third element you add in is three D lights. Three D lights let you um, light up the scene. By default, there's kind of a general ambient light, so you can see objects if you don't supply any lights. Um, but then you can supply your own point lights and ambient lights and the position of these, the intensity of these, the color of these affect how things will show up in the scene graph and how it'll be displayed. And in addition to this, there are some user defined um, uh, open source libraries like FXYZ, which allow you to programmatically create more complex shapes. And I'll show you an example of this as well as a, um, an open source library that you can use to to build more complicated um, user interfaces by using um, integration and dependencies and other libraries. So just to, to start out with this, why don't we take the um, Earth Sphere example. Um, so go ahead and thank you. And if, if, if you look at this, this is a very simple JavaFX application, which um, I have here. Um, not much code, and this 
um, creates a sphere. Um, so it's building a sphere with a, um, a radius of 400, um, taking the Mercator image and then applying it, um, setting the, um, the material on it, and then gives us a little bit of control so we can rotate the sphere via a binding um, when we press the mouse and drag it. Um, and then it adds a camera and adds a point light to the scene. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Okay, and give me a sec to share the right window. Okay, so um, what you'll be able to see here is the running um, Earth sphere, and this is the the same flat image I showed in the slides, but now it's been it's been projected and texture mapped onto a sphere. And there's some mouse handlers, so now when you click and you drag, you can you can rotate the sphere, and um, you know right 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 around here somewhere is um, is Denver. So um, this this gives you a really quick you know visually impressive um user interface with very little code i mean it's it's under 100 lines and you can have a a working 3d java effects application okay so as a as a second example let's let's look at some um some lighting and how um lighting affects um your application so let me let me see which one do we want well, let's hope this is the right one. Okay, so yeah, this is the one I wanted. So this has um, three different lights in it. We have a red light, a blue light, um, well, two different lights, a red light, a blue light, but then three different coordinates, X, Y, and Z for each of these lights. So we can set the position of the two lights. Um, we're using binding here to set the position of the lights. So these are all declared as properties, which is a, a special extension in JavaFX. And um, properties, unlike variables, um, you can you can bind to using extra API on top of it, which is in a nice fluent interface. And this allows you to do things like when the um, um, when the slider moves, you also move the light. So we're going to use some sliders to change the position of the lights. Um, and this is nice; it avoids all the typical event handler code, which you'd have to write in Swing or earlier frameworks. And um, this is how we're going to illuminate the scene which has a box and then these two lights inside of it. Okay, so he here you can see the, um, the light example. And so the red light is, is over here. I'll pull, I'll pull it to one side. And the blue light is over here. Let's pull it up, 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 up. Okay, so now you can see clearly the blue light and the red light are isolated, illuminating different sides of the, the sphere, and the side which is black has no illumination. Now, if we get the blue light to join the red light, you can see that the com combination of blue and red light gives us a nice purple tint. Um, and, um, you know, of course, if we hide the lights inside the sphere, we'll make it entirely black. Let's turn it black. Okay, so now we, we have absolutely no lights because the two lights are are hidden. Um, okay, so that's a good question. Can can I use quaternions qua, quaternions for rotations? Okay, I don't know what a quaternion is, but that's an excellent question. So maybe Carl or Jonathan knows the answer to that. Thanks, thanks, Ed, for asking good questions. And th this is exactly what you should do in the chat while I'm talking. Feel free to. Um, chat amongst yourselves or ask questions to me and I'll, I'll answer them as they come along. Okay, so that's a quick example of how you can do point lights. And uh, the last example I wanna show, which, which I think is a lot of fun, is um, making use of um, another one of the JavaFX um, APIs, which is the ability to um, uh, the ability to use a canvas for high performance rendering. Um, and in this example, this is one of the examples from the book, it, it builds a, a particle system which you can control, which is based on the JavaFX Canvas API 
Um, and the, the way the JavaFX Canvas API works is traditional JavaFX rendering is all um, vector based. So you you add in you know rectangles and other shapes, and you shade them, and you set the line color and all that stuff, and you can draw, and you, you don't have to worry about refreshing each paint cycle. Um, Canvas is a much more low level API where every paint cycle you you draw exactly what you want with the highest performance. And um, this is kind of like the really, really old um, paint method in early Java, um, just optimized for like modern web UIs, very similar to Canvas and web browsers. And you can do awesome high performance graphics like building particle systems, which um, I'm gonna show you um, an example of. Okay, so this one, particle, particle. What is this window called? Particle system configurable. Got it. Okay, so this is an example of the particle system in JavaFX. Um, and with a default configuration, every time you click, you get these little particles which, which get created. You can, you can change the number of particles, so more or fewer particles, the duration, so we can, we can make them kind of get wider and spread out a little more, the particle size, um, how op opaque they are, the color of the particles. That, that was not a good color choice. See, this, this is why um, programmers shouldn't be designers. I, I, there's no way I'm gonna get a good color scheme if I don't just use black as the background. Um, but you can see that you can have you can have a lot of fun with this to build complex particle systems and and absolutely kill your processor with all the processing. Um, so again, like this is another one of the advanced features in JavaFX is using the canvas. You can do really complex um, graphics, which um, basically give you absolute control over what gets rendered in the um, in the scene graph. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna go into a little bit is best practices for when you're building your JavaFX application. Because I think if you've if you've done any um, UI development in the past, probably there are certain things that you've you've traditionally done to build UI applications. And you know, this is 2021. Uh, we have more modern um, frameworks. We have faster internet. We have larger drives. And the, the way which you build applications, the considerations for applications has changed quite a bit as well. Um, okay, so Ed's also wondering if you can do Euler angles. That's that's another good question. And and Carl mentioned that the check the FXYZ APIs to see if it supports um, quaternions or quaternions or other things like that because they may actually have support for some of this. Um, so when you're packaging your application, the first thing to keep in mind is that um, the the average size of applications, even on mobile, has greatly increased. So back, you know, seven eight years ago, um, mobile app, even on mobile devices, you your typical application was under 200 megabytes, only about 100 megabytes. And um, as of a few years ago, it was quite common for applications to be gigabytes in size. Um, so in comparison, if you, if you look at the, the entire JDK, if you bundled the entire JDK with your application, that's, that's like, you know, maybe like a hundred megabytes or something. So the, the size of the JDK, um, doesn't really matter anymore. Um, at one time it was significant to try to have the Java runtime separate from your application. But if you look at modern applications and how they're built, um, really nobody really, nobody worries about or has as a primary concern, the size of your of your application. And so given this, there's there's really no good reason to not bundle the JDK together with your application. And um, there's lots of good options for doing this. So if you're still handing out fat jars where you package all your dependencies and run the command line, you should, you should stop doing this. Um, it's not really a modern practice and um, simply bundle your JDK using JLink or JPackage. JPackage is a new, um, Packager, which originally was part of JavaFX, it was the J the JPackager 
um, when it was part of JavaFX, and they resurrected it for Java 14. It's the best way to package your JavaFX applications on the command line using core JDK tools. Um, and this is this is what you should be doing if you're shipping your applications to end users. So it's a great experience for them where they just run it like a native application. The other advantage of picking the Java version you package is that it doesn't matter what JDK version they have installed or, or don't have installed. So it's a JDK version you've tested against when you release an update to your application, you're releasing with the latest version of the JDK and they're getting all the security fixes with that come with it. And it's the JDK version you've tested with so you know it works. Back in the day of, of applets and web start, um, you'd be running against an arbitrary JDK and often that would break your application because the APIs were not 100% compatible. There's a bunch of additional options which, which also are great choices now. Um, I'll talk a bit about the next slide, but using Graal to build native images is a great way and actually the, the only way to build on certain mobile applications. Open Web Start is um, a great option if you want to um, deploy in the browser. And um, this is there's an open source version of Web Start that's supported by Caracoon, and you can go to Open Web Start to find out more about that. And I showed a demo of JPro earlier, and JPro is an awesome technology built by um, one of our, our friendly JavaFX German companies where you can run JavaFX straight in the browser um, as long as you have a server side to do the server side application rendering. Um, the front end and the browser is super lightweight. So um, that's great. Apologies for the Skype window open for my wife. And um, <laughs> Um, let me talk a little bit about how Gluon works. So um, Gluon um, packages up your mobile application together so you can take your Java application, all of your dependencies, pick your version of the Java and JavaFX SDK, and it'll package it all together inside using um, the, the Graal VM and the ahead of time compiler AOT support in Graal VM to build in a single executable. Um, they also have a bunch of mobile APIs which you can use to access the accelerometer, or the camera, um, any of the, the on-device capabilities. And it will spit out um, builds which will work on Windows and Linux and Mac, um, native images for desktop and native images for mobile and embedded. And all their technology is open source and free except for some of the um, special Gluon controls which um, they, they let you know that they're, they're specifically things which... Um, are, are proprietary, but pretty much everything which they contribute back to the JavaFX core and the, the core classes are all open source and available for free. So I think it's a great way to get started. And Gluon also provides all the official JavaFX builds from JavaFX 11 and up. So also go to their website and get both JavaFX and also um, the um, scene builder, which we talked about. The second best practice I'm going to mention is really um, uh, you should target mobile first. And I think if you look at the adoption of mobile in terms of traffic, um, the amount of mobile web traffic has increased steadily. And now over half of the mobile, half of the traffic on the web comes directly from mobile devices, not even from desktops. Um, maybe that's changed in the past year because of COVID. Um, since we're all stuck at home, I think I, at least... I've personally been on my desktop a lot more than I have been on mobile devices. Um, but I think for the majority of the world, it's still true that mobile devices are the, the primary view into the world. And the best way to develop on mobile is using um, Gluon's mobile support, which works on anything JDK 11 plus and up, will run on Mac OS, Linux, iOS, and Android, has great plugins for Maven and Gradle, ID support for IntelliJ Eclipse and NetBeans, and you can check out examples um, at the URL on screen. And the, the third thing I think um, when you're looking at modern application development is building for the cloud. So a great example of this is um, ETO board, which is a, um, an agile um, um, planning framework, which um, is built by a German company, a German consultancy. And basically what they do is they allow you to um, synchronize scrum planning across multiple different organizations and have big live interactive whiteboards or um, uh, touch screens where you can work with other folks. And any application like this, you need a back end, you need a, um, um, a cloud service backing it. And again, this is, this is what folks expect from modern applications is that you just, you run it, you get multi-tenant, you get um, online interaction, and there's no reason why you're 
your desktop applications shouldn't be just as interactive as your web applications by using it, um, the advantage of things like REST APIs. So um, I'm going to show you a quick example of a JavaFX application with a REST API, which goes back and um, checks the checks the weather from a, a public um, service, which which exposes what the current weather is anywhere in the world. It's using um, a, a basic JSON parser um, and um, um, JSONB interface in order to do the marshaling and the unmarshaling of the data. And I, I think when when you're looking at um, building Java applications which have cloud backends, um, there's already a lot of great resources on building applications using Spring Framework, using JSONB, um, using other other client server technologies to to kind of give you the best of both worlds and be able to um, build applications which also um, have great cloud backends. So the JavaFX part of this application is fairly simple. Um, this is the entire code for the user interface, which is um, under 100 lines. It's only 85 lines long. So it adds in um, an image view for showing you what the current weather conditions are, a label, um, some styling. And the, the real work here is going back and using this REST URL to communicate with the backend service, which in this case, we're going to um, open weather map. And of course, we want to check the weather in Denver and see how you are all doing out there in terms of um, weather. And then it, it's going to give it back in, let's see what we did here, Celsius, I guess. Um, so we convert from Kelvin to Celsius using this formula. We could also do our own math formula if we want to do to Fahrenheit, but we, we all know what the superior um, scientific uh, measurement system is. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and run this application. And then the weather app. OK, so you, you should all soon be able to see the, the weather application. The current weather in Denver is clear, 4.88 Celsius, which I, I think is fairly cold, and 27% humidity. So how does that? feel to you all um, in Denver? Is that is that close to what you're feeling weather-wise? Uh, OK, so, so Carl's wondering if we can do Fahrenheit. You know, we can we can always do Fahrenheit, but we have to actually have to do some coding. So let's let's do some let's do some group coding on this. Uh, what window is that? Weather app one. Okay, so if I if I remember the formula for this, we subtract and then we let's see Celsius. We we multiply times five ninths or nine fifths, nine fifths, and we add thirty two to it. Maybe somebody will, somebody will correct me if we're wrong. See, you're you're kidding, Carl. But this is it, it, if we didn't actually um, make live changes to it then you wouldn't know that the code was actually working. It, it could all be just kind of a fake, a fake demo. And we're not actually, um, we're not actually doing stuff. Okay. The weather app. Okay. So if I got, th thanks Carl. Okay. So I believe the weather's 40 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is pretty cold, almost freezing, but not quite. But it's a clear day out there, so that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good weather. Thir apparently, thirty-nine Fahrenheit's in in Boulder, so we're only two degrees off about from from Boulder. I chose I chose I chose Denver, not Boulder. Okay, so I think we're I think we're doing pretty good on the REST API. This is calling back to Open Weather Map, so it should be it should be pretty accurate. Now um, the next thing we're gonna do because we're having fun live coding is I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what a deployment looks like, um, and we're gonna deploy the weather app to um, a backend artifact management system. So of course um, I'm choosing Artifactory. Um, in advance I configured my build script, but if you're if you're curious about what the build script is looks like. Um, it's a Gradle build script. This is the Maven publish. And then here's my credentials. Um, this instance is going to disappear in two weeks, but have at it if you, if you want to play around with it. 
Okay, so this should have published to my artifactory instance, and then let me let me quickly show you the the running cloud instance I have. Let's see. Okay, so we just we just did a deployment here to our cloud instance. I'm refreshing the UI to, so we can see the latest builds. Um, okay, so we have a couple builds here. Um, I pushed one at, at a couple right before the presentation to make sure it worked, and they scanned with no issues. And um, you can see the latest build here, which we built. Um, so it shows you what module we published. Um, I believe if we go in here, we can see exactly what dependencies we have. Um, so here are the artifacts. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. And I think, uh, here we go, dependencies. Um, so you can see we depend on Jackson, which we're using for the JSONB parsing. We're depending on JavaFX base, JavaFX graphics, and JavaFX controls, which are the three modules. And we should also be able to get some some security data once once it finishes. And this is basically checking to make sure that we don't have any violations against old versions of libraries, which might cause security issues. And it looks like we also have no no security violations, which is great. So our security checked out and scanned successfully using X-ray, which is our security scanner. Um, okay, so let me flip back over to the presentation. Let's see. Okay, so um, what I just showed you for the, uh, obviously the code base is all free and available as part of the book. We have a GitHub repo with that. Um, the user interface I was using was Artifactory with our cloud subscription. Again, we have a free version of that as well which is what I was using. So if you want to try that for artifact management and security, um, that's the, the main product which JFrog does. Um, all of the stuff I've been showing you is contributed by these great folks. So a couple of these folks are, are hanging out in the audience. So I'm going to give a shout out to um, Jonathan Giles, who, who did the... Um, Apparently I, apparently, I need some unit tests, too. Thanks, Jonathan. Jonathan Giles, who, who did the awesome chapter on controls in the book. Um, Carl's also been an author and contributor to a bunch of our JavaFX books. I can't remember. Were you a tech reviewer on this title, Carl? I can't remember if we had you tech review this or not. Um, but also, Johan Voss is an OpenJD contributor. Um, Jose Pereira, um, Gail, um, Paul, um, Jim Weaver... Eugene, Sven, um, uh, Tony, William, Bruno. Oh, Bruno's also in the audience. So thanks for coming out, Bruno. Bruno Borges, uh, Wei Chi Gao, and of course, Jonathan. So um, all of us kind of came together and we built what we think is the definitive guide to modern Java clients with Java effects. And oh, thanks, Carl. So Carl was the tech reviewer on this. So that's awesome. Thank you. And uh, we got permission from JPress to do a, a new version of this. So um, I haven't actually told any of our co-authors yet. <laughs> so you, you guys are getting notified on the, the Denver jug stream. But just like as of maybe yesterday when when um, they finally finalized it with us, we, we have a new version of this for JavaFX 17, which we're going to be working on. So um, you can register for a chance to win a Yoda Lego set. Um, by entering the raffle. Um, you can also sign up for a free cloud trial, as I mentioned, um, which is the technology I was showing with JavaFX. Um, the Definitive Guide to Modern Java Clients at JavaFX is a great resource. Um, so go out and buy a copy. Or as, as I just told you, there's a new version coming out. So, so buy, a, buy a new copy um, once Java 17 comes out. So October, you should buy the new, new edition. And this is also a great time for Q&A. So you want to... You want to hop on here, Matt, and join me, and we can do a little bit of chat yeah. and QA. So uh, you got a comment from Dean there. Cool stuff. Um, what I liked about it is I've never seen so many demos, right? Usually there's live coding, and then there's one demo. But you had like four or five, so that was pretty awesome. 
<laughs> yeah, no. I mean, if you're if you're gonna do UI technology, it's all about the the demos and how easy it is. I mean, nothing I showed would take more than you know maybe a day for most of us in the audience to to code. Um, so it's also really easy to get started and build your own UI project and just just kind of hack around with. And it's the actually it's actually we the the example we used for the Denver jug was written in JavaFX as well. We did a little little game written in JavaFX to teach kids programming. So it's a great way to learn, teach right. your kids as well. Yep, and even my kids taught that class. So if a couple of you know younger teenagers can teach about JavaFX, almost anyone can. That was on Raspberry yep. Pi. That was really neat. So uh, I also found it funny that you were using a weather app because even though it says 40 right now, we are due for a mega storm of the century coming in oh, wow. Thursday night through Sunday. They're talking like three to five feet. And so um, I'm excited for that because of skiing, but I think anyone <laughs> flying probably isn't. But not many people are flying these days. So Yeah, now the ski slopes must be, must be pretty good this year. I mean... You're not, well, you're not last having all the tourists come and pack them down. <laughs> right, right. No, it's uh it's been not too bad if you uh if you get out and mask up, you know. Nice, nice. That's really good. Yeah. So uh, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um congrats on the new book. That is awesome that you are, you know, starting a new version. The fact that you think you'll have it done by October is also impressive. I like that attitude. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it'll kill us, but somehow we, we always seem to make the deadline and, and, and get books published. So, um, I, I, right. I think programmers are motivated by deadlines. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and thanks, thanks Jonathan, um, about JavaFX. So, I, I think uh, the reason why JavaFX has remained a strong technology is because of the community. Um, so folks like Johan Voss, who are he's an Open JDK, Open JFX contributor. He he's actually one of the primary folks working on JavaFX technology. Um, all the folks at Gluhan, Jose Pereira, um, Eugene, uh, the entire team there, they're they're super passionate about JavaFX technology. And just folks in the community who have stuck with it, like um, you know Bruno and Dean and um, everyone else who who helped out with the book. Um, I, I think they're, they're really passionate and they, they love the Java community, but also um, JavaFX as a technology. Yeah, it's nice to have it as an option, that's for sure. Yep, now this is, and this is awesome that I'm able to present at the Denver Jug finally. We've been talking about this for a while, but um, <laughs> it took, it took, it took, you know, Fuji and Jay Frog and everyone kind of pushing me to do it to make it happen. <laughs> well, hopefully next time we can do it in person and take you one of our cool breweries around here yeah that'd be awesome all right well thank you for your time we'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your evening all right thanks very much matt and thanks everyone for joining in the audience and i hope you i hope you all enjoyed and you're gonna pick java effects and do something awesome with it for your next technology so if you do share on twitter mention me steve on java and i'm i'm happy to um, promote and, and amplify folks who are doing cool stuff. Nice. All right.